that he is worthy of praise every day. But if there's any day that God is worthy of praise, there should be a shout in the atmosphere. If there's anything that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is worthy of praise, there should be hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice. I don't know about you, but I have so much to rejoice. And be glad in. God has been good. God has been good. God has been good. And He is worthy. He is worthy. He alone is worthy. A lot of praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Y'all praise and start the wind to go forth. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you for this day. God, when we think about what you did for us on Calvary's cross, Lord God, that can help but be a praise in our hearts, a praise on our lips. The thing that you died for a sinner like me, Lord God, I want to thank you, Lord God. Thank you that we're able to meet together, Father God, on this great Sunday morning. God, I ask and pray, Lord God, that you just continue to have your way. Continue to do a mighty thing in our lives, Lord God. Stir up the atmosphere, Father God. That praise will just continue to go forth, Father God. God, you are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. God, you are worthy of the honor. And Jesus, awesome. In mighty name, we do pray. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. This morning scripture, you may be seated if you can. This morning scripture is coming from Romans, the fifth chapter. I'm trying not to mess up Pastor's notes because I know he's going to preach. Amen. <laughs> Romans, the fifth chapter, starting at verse 12. And it reads thusly. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in, to, in the world, but sin is imputed when there is no law. Yes. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, yes. even over them who had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him who was to come, but not as the offense, also also is the free gift. Yes. For if through the offense one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abound unto many, and not as it was by one who sinned, so is the gift. Judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto yes. justification. For by one man's offense death reigned by one. Much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness yes. shall yes. reign in life by one, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. What an awesome word from the Lord. Amen. Yes. What an awesome word for the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that we can come together as family. I miss y'all all, but even the more that we can stand here on this great Sunday morning to hear a word from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's just set the atmosphere. Let's give God a praise. If you really believe that he's going to speak to you on this Sunday morning through our awesome pastor, Reverend Frank T. White, give God a shout of glory. Give him some praise. Give him some honor. For he so really deserves it. God bless you. Oh, come on, come on, come on, hallelujah. Come on, come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, I know some of us may still have a, a little few concerns, amen, but if you're sitting with folk, amen, hallelujah, that you stayed under the same roof with last night, hello, somebody, then you should be, amen, uninhibited in your desire to give God praise. 
Amen. If you're just a little bit far away from somebody, you got your mask on. Amen. Hallelujah. Just look at them. Amen. Hallelujah. And they said, if I can't, you can't say a word. I'll just have to wave my hand. Come on. Come on. Let's acknowledge the Lord. Come on. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give him honor. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 It's good. It's good to be here. It's good to be a man with the saints of God and those who are a part of this household of faith. We thank God for your presence. We thank you for your prayers and amen for amen. going through this season with us. It has indeed been a strange one. Amen. But God is still God. And Jesus is still Lord. I was thinking about some things just the other day and haven't seen our babies as they are growing up. And I look at Cameron and in the back of the truck and my God. Amen. Uh, though time, time, time waits for no man. And again, to see Chris, he's growing up. Amen. And I said, my God. Again, and some of us, amen, haven't grown up, but we are growing out. <laughs> my God. <laughs> amen. It has indeed been good. <laughs> it has been good. But we are indeed looking forward to what thus saith the Lord on today. And it is my desire to say what he desires for me to say, nothing more and nothing less. If you will, I'm going to have you turn to the gospel according to St. John. Verse 18, the, sec the, th the second chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. the gospel according to St. John, and if you will find the Romans passage. I'll begin in Romans chapter 5, and I'll read just verse 12, but I shall use this as the basis for my text today. And it reads, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. John 2 and 18 said, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and thou would rear it up in three days. But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said, that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus has said. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Pray with us today as we deal with the thought, the backup plan, the backup plan. And I want to deal with the subtopic, facing the failures of the fall, facing the failures of the fall. God always has a backup plan. Let us pray. Father, thank you again for all that you have done. Thank you for this ministry. We thank you for this family, for being able to come back together. God, we acknowledge that last year, this time, we were unable to do so. We were in the grip of something that 
impacted this world in such a way that many wondered if we would indeed come out. Many wondered if the church would indeed survive. But I'm reminded by what you told Simon Peter. Upon this rock I build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we're here today, O oh God, asking you to have your way. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Saints, the significance of this day can never be downplayed, neglected, or ignored, for it represents the carrying out of those things which are foundational to our faith. We come together, not forsaking the assembling, the assembly of ourselves, but so much the more as we see the day approaching. I believe not to do so would result in the dereliction of our Christian duty. For nearly some 2,000 years ago, a preacher who walked the dusty roads of Palestine, a man endured a tragic ordeal, whereby after being betrayed, battered, and beaten, there he would hang from a cross, crudely erected, if you will, from the sixth to the ninth hour, suffocating under the weight of his own body. Envision it now, Jesus, the Savior of the world, hung between two thieves, enduring the taunts and the treatment from the very people that he had come to save. His crime, loving them and desiring to set them free from the bondage of sin. Can you imagine that just in a span of time, a relatively short span of time, of just over three years, he had performed and completed his earthly miracles and his ministry. He had opened blind eyes. The lame had indeed walked. Those who were possessed with demons had been delivered. The dead brought back to life. But to many, many more, his reach into their lives symbolized that there was indeed hope for them all. Amen. Jesus was not just the savior for the elite, but he came for those who were indeed considered to be the elect. Amen. Those a man God called the very apple of his eye. Yes. Yes. And yet as he hung there, despite enduring all that he had gone through, he managed to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. And before giving up the ghost, he declared, it is finished. Amen. At that moment, my sisters and brothers, the sun ceased to shine. The earth shook. Yes. And some of those that were dead, amen, came back to life amen. and began to walk the streets of Jerusalem again. What a sight this was to behold. For many, however, their only thought was that the ministry and mission of this man was over. Again, in a short time span, his lifeless body would be taken down, hastily prepared, and placed in a borrowed tomb. These moments are reminiscent of some of the most bewildering moments of life those that can be best described as sad, sickening, and surreal. Sad in the sense when we are forced to deal with the realities of this life. Death and the loss of a loved one is never easy. The pain, my sisters and brothers, is real. Their hearts were heavy. Their dreams, their hopes, their aspirations that were tied up in this man called Jesus were dashed. It's also sickening. How could those that he had did so much for choose to serve such an indignation? For when they had a choice to set someone free, 
They chose a Barabbas. And Jesus himself was offered up as our sacrificial lamb. Surreal, surreal comes into this part because although it's sickening and the fact that folk can change up on you, it's surreal, amen, when the realities of the moment just slap you in the face. Have you ever had a moment where you say, I can't believe this is happening to me. And we're left trying to figure it out. Why me, Lord? What placed Jesus there? Why did this have to happen? What was the overall objective? Luke 19 and 10, as we said last week, he said that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Last week I gave some sense of what this meant, but understand this. Jesus' message and mission were tied to the notion of lostness. Amen. Go back and look at Luke, the 15th chapter, the parable that dealt with lost things, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. They all point to this. Amen. But Pastor White, why is Romans chapter 5 so significant? And why today? I just want to shout, man. I'm glad you asked. Noted New Testament scholar Thomas Schreiner says that our text is perhaps one of the most difficult and controversial passages to interpret in all appalling literature. Another commentator, Albert McLean, says and suggests that perhaps it is this passage that Peter in 2 Peter 3 and 16 had in mind when he said that some of Paul's writings were hard to understand. This week, after reading over a hundred pages of commentary about this passage, I struggled and found myself wrestling with all that it had to say. Amen. However, what I discovered, that the difficulty was not with the text, nor its main idea, which is plain, plain to clear, but with the many details. When you really think about the goodness of Jesus. When you think about what he brought you from. No, I didn't say where he brought you from. But what he brought you from. Because when you look at yourself right now. When you look at, amen, all the things that you have endured. And the mere fact that you still are clothed in your right mind. Somehow you held it together. Yeah. Somehow you made it out. Yeah. Somehow, hallelujah, you're able to lift up your hand and tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Lord. I thought about this thing. But rather than wading into several weeks of messages on that level of detail, I decided to give it a single broad overview of Romans 12. Amen. Verses 12, chapter 5, verses 12 through 19. I won't be able to explain it in detail, and I assure you that before we leave out of here, we will get the sense and get the gist of all that God wants us to leave here with today. It's worth it. It's worth it because God is indeed in control. We, through our faith, have been justified by Christ. And Paul shows us that the only way to escape the effects of the fall of the human race, hallelujah, is knowing Jesus. Amen. And the grace, amen, that God imputed through him that offers justification for all who receive it. This gives us an even greater assurance and a hope to know that indeed some glad morning, when this life is over, we'll indeed fly away. If we are in Christ, we are not saved because of good deeds, Amen. but we are saved because of what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. So these verses reinforce and cement everything that came before. They also point to what comes after. For in chapter 6, Paul moves from salvation to sanctification, which is crucial to living a life of holiness and freedom from sin. And understanding that we have a new identity in Jesus. The old man is truly passed away. 
And you are indeed a new creation. Paul contrasts our old identity that was in Adam, the first man, the first individual. The God, a man, hallelujah, had allowed to walk through the Garden of Eden and given him dominion over everything. But somehow Adam had fallen. Now we can celebrate the fact that we have a new identity in Jesus. In my remaining time today, and believe it or not, I'm just about done. I've learned, amen, that sometimes you've got to cut across the path. Amen, to get where you're going. Can I get a witness today? But as we have this time, I want us to take a few moments to delve deeper into our text by examining the failure of the fall by making the following observations. First and foremost, my brothers and sisters, we must see that there was indeed a universal problem. There was indeed a universal problem. Verses 12 through 14 lets us know that sin was our universal problem. Adam was not a mythical figure invented by the author of Genesis to explain somehow how sin entered into the human race. Rather, God created Adam and Eve as the first humans and placed them in the Garden of Eden and gave them a strict commandment not to eat of the tree of, no of knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve disobeyed God resulting in them being banished from the garden and God imposing a curse on the human race as a result of their sin. Paul says in verse 5a, verse 12a of chapter 5, through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin. The one man is Adam, as he talks about in verse 14. And Paul is talking about the original sin. When Adam disobeyed God's explicit command and ate of the forbidden fruit, God had warned him that in the day that you do so, a man that you would indeed die. Genesis 2 and 17. This referred to both a physical death and a spiritual death or separation from God. God had blessed Adam. He had made him his appointed representative, the head of the human race. His sin involved the entirety of human race. His sin was imputed, amen, to both you and to me. Because of Adam's sin, each of us is born guilty of sin. Before we first committed any willful sin. We are not sinners because we sin, amen, but we, are, we sin because we are sinners by virtue, amen, of our union with Adam. You've got to understand, I don't care how good you are. I don't care how fine you are. I don't care how long your hair is. I don't care how beautiful your nails are. Watch out here, preacher. Amen. You need to know, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. That you are at the end of the day. Your righteousness is as of a filthy rag. We are nothing and we are nobody. But secondly, not only must we understand sin, as our universal problem. Thank you, Minister White. I'll take that. Amen. We must also realize, recognize, and understand, amen, that there is salvation through an uncompromising position. Yes. Salvation, the uncompromising position. Paul contrasts the devastating effects of Adam's transgression. Yes. The many, amen, hallelujah, a man that took effect as a result of Adam's fall. God's grace. His unmerited favor in our lives. For by grace all you say through faith. And it's not because we are so good. But it's the gift of God. I believe, amen, Paul continues using words like grace, gift, and abound. To emphasize just how wonderful God is. He's wonderful today, saints. He's wonderful and he's worthy to be praised. When we think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he had done for us. Somebody should want to get excited and give God a little glory. Somebody should want to get excited and give God a little bit of praise. 
and I get a witness. But Paul says, even in the midst of all of this, that we must know that by this, through one man, one man, hey man, a man sin. It was through another that we would be saved. I like this because this brings me to my final point. That as we look at verse 17 and the verses which follow, it points to the Savior as the unselfish provision. He is the ultimate. He is unconditional. And he is indeed unique. Paul talks about, amen, the abundance of grace. And lets us know, amen, hallelujah, that God is indeed good. That God, amen, that his supply of love for us will never run dry. It was in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, and the 21st verse. It says that he that knew no sin was made sin. Amen. That the gift that he gave us, amen, is indeed a righteousness. Christ's righteousness, amen, was credited to our account. God just does not forgive us of our sins. He also bestows upon us a level of righteousness because in Christ Jesus, we are indeed justified. That means that we are made right, that we are given good standing. Oh, when I think about Jesus, amen, go with me if you will, and all that he's done for me. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, you too. Amen. He did something for you too. When I think about Jesus, amen, hallelujah, and all that he went through as he trudged up the Calvary, as he carried his cross, somebody ought to say amen, how they whipped him all night long, how they shoved the crown of thorns on his head, how he beaten and battered, pressed his way, because he knew what his assignment begins. I like the fact that as Paul continues to write, we are reminded, hallelujah, that if we go on in Jesus, that we will reign with him. We are the followers and servants of the one who is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And here we are as a community of the faithful. Amen. Recipients of his unmerited favor. And make mine my God in merited favor. His words in John 2 and 19 let us know that there was indeed a backup plan. Can I get a witness in here? If you tear it down in three days, I'm going to raise it back up. Can I get a witness? In some regard, he's addressing the fall. In some regard, He's talking about uh, the mere fact uh, that you got at him. Uh, you twisted him up. Uh, you messed it up. Uh, uh, you caused him uh, to miss the mark. Uh, but understand here, uh, I'm just going to play uh, into your hand. Uh, I'm going to go along. Uh, hello in here. Uh, as some folks say, uh, I'm going to go along uh, to get along. Uh, but understand, uh, do what you do. Uh, tear it down. Uh, but in three days, uh, I'm going to raise it up. Uh, when Jesus is here, uh, when he's talking about uh, how he would back up uh, his promises. Uh, he had been telling them, uh, I've come to seek and save uh, that which was lost. Uh, but I'm here uh, to back it up. Uh, can I get a witness? He talked about uh, backing up his prophecies. Uh, had no somebody, uh, the one that was wounded uh, for our transgressions uh, and bruised uh, for our iniquities. Uh, had no in here. Uh, you can take him uh, at his word. Uh, it's a backup plan. Uh, but not only that, uh, to back up uh, his purposes. Uh, yes, the first Adam failed. Uh, he had everything. Uh, to dominion over the main. Uh, over the domain. Uh, whatever Adam called every animal. Uh, that was it. Uh, God 
gave him free reign. But one tree he was not supposed to eat from. Amen. He slipped and he failed. But not only did he have dominion over the domain, but he had dialogue with the deity. Adam could walk and talk with God in the cool of the day. And God would commune with his friend. And I did a witness, but I'm so glad the backup plan to take the purposes. Ain't man not only ain't man demean over the main and dialogue with the deity, but understand this: the decimation of disease. Because in the midst of the tree, in the midst of the garden, there was a tree. Hallelujah. That had leaves that would keep Adam and Revelator. God himself huh, talked about that tree. Huh, little on that was good huh, for the healing of the nation. Huh, but I'm so glad huh, that Jesus fixes it huh, this way. Huh, and I'm almost done. Huh, tear it down. Huh, but in three days, I'm going to raise it up. Huh, three days, I'm going to raise it up. Huh, he was alluding huh, a man to John. Huh, the third chapter huh, and the 14th verse. When he said, even as Moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness, even the Son of Man must be lifted up. Hallelujah. And that everyone that believeth in him shall have everlasting life. I'm so glad that the songwriter said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Thank God for a backup plan. Thank God for the backup plan. So when we had messed up, when we had missed the mark, he was our backup plan. And I'm so glad that he went there to Calvary. He hung his head. He bled and died. They took him down. They placed him in a bottle of tomb. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I couldn't tell it like this this morning. But I'm so glad. Hallelujah. That told my God that although they placed him in a bottle of tomb, he had a backup plan. A backup plan. And that plan was to get back up. The backup plan was to get back up. Because somebody said early, early Sunday morning, he got back up with all power in his hand. I'm so glad that he went down, knocked on the devil's door, said, Give me my keys. I'm taking them back. You no longer have authority. You no longer have dominion. And I stop by here to tell somebody you don't have to struggle. You don't have to try to figure out what he's already worked out. My backup plan took effect in my life that while I was sinking deep in sin, Far, from her, a peaceful shore, very deeply, they was said, I was seeking to rise no more, but my master, but my master, but my maker, but my deliverer, had a backup plan, and from the water, lifted me, now say, now say, say, am I, is there anybody here today, that can say thank God, I'm back up, I'm back up, the church has been closed, but we're back up, look at God, look at God, may have a mask on, but I'm back up, may have been down, but thank God, I was not out, I'm back up, is there anybody that can stand up and tell the devil, I'm back up, I'm back up, because I've been back up, what I know about my God.
God is that he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Don't you write on the ground of God. Tear it down. Break it down. Undermine. Undercut. But trust me. back up. I don't care what adversity you face in this life. I don't care what struggles, amen, may be abounding and cropping up around you. Understand this. There's a backup plan. Hello, somebody. You can. You can. You can. Take hope. You can take heart. And you, if you understand nothing else that I say today, Jesus died so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. When he says, I'm not willing that any should perish, that God is not willing that any should perish, but they who believe on me shall have everlasting life. Yes, 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 yes. The saving relationship Jesus, Jesus. is ongoing. Jesus. In fact, many of the instances in the New Testament when we talk about being saved, it talks about in the tense in which it is. It's not just it stops when you pray that prayer. But because of relationship and because of the connection that you have with him by and through faith, it's ongoing. So much so that Jesus breaks it down. That guess what? God loves you so much, he'll forgive you for just about anything. It's only when you grieve the Holy Ghost. When you blaspheme the Comforter. That part of the Trinity that's been sent to minister to you at your lowest estate. To remind people that no matter where you are. To those that are strung out on drugs. To those that are walking the street. For those who have become so demoralized and demeaned that their self-concept has been destroyed. Jesus died for you. And there is nothing no devil in hell. He bore our pains, our sins, and our griefs. But when he got up, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. 
I speak now as the pastor of this church. As the shepherd of this household of faith, we are back up. We're coming out of this thing. We're coming out of this thing. And we're walking by faith and not by sight. God, continue to preserve and protect each and every disciple and their families. You've been good. You prepared a table in the presence of our enemies, in the midst of pestilence and disease. I ain't complaining about it, but even a man sent a stimulus check in somebody's account. <laughs> Somehow another showed up. I didn't say thank you, Joe Biden. I said thank you, Jesus. I didn't say thank you, Joe. But God has a way. And he's the God of the just and the unjust. But so much the more for those who love him. Maybe there's one today who does not know him in the pardoning of your sins. I would like to invite you, I would like to encourage you today that on this day of days that you will receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. He wants to do a new work in your life. If you feel distant, if you feel like you've backslidden, you can be restored today by praying the prayer and saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. God, I'm a sinner in need of salvation. God, I am your child, but I strayed away. And Pastor White spoke about lost things. But I'm so glad that you came to seek and save that which was lost. That you would lead the 99 sheep to come and find me. He wants to do it in your life today. If you're listening to me, if you don't know him, pray that prayer. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open up, I will come in. I'll come and I'll meet with you. I'll meet you right where you are. That's the kind of God we serve. And he wants to save us. As we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, it is my prayer. And I'm just going to pray briefly as we find out if there's someone here today that does not have your sacrament we want you to amen ask amen let us you may indicate thusly by raising your hand amen we see over here minister white we're going to make sure that we get everybody taken care of there are two here god bless you bishop amen one there ministers if you will come and we're going to have you to fan out minister white if you would distribute those Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray now that your word that was preached, God, will sink deep into the hearts and minds of these thy people. Thank you for your backup plan. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your protection. And God, we thank you, God, that it is our desire to do your goodwill and pleasure for our lives, the things that you have ordained and sanctioned for us. And God, we'll bless you. We thank you for that right now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. After the ministers have served, if you will come back here and, and we will take it first. Thank you, Jesus. All who can stand, if you will, stand with us. The Apostle Paul writes, and I read, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as often as you drink in, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many do sleep. I will receive it first, and then we will ask the ministers to partake. But Father, thank you for this bread. Amen. Thank you for it represents you the body of your son, Jesus. Lord, I take it, receiving it in my heart. Likewise, this cup represents his shed blood. Wash me anew. Thank you, Father, for fresh starts. Thank you for what you had in store for me through the backup plan. I receive it now. Thank you, Jesus. To the ministers, if you will take the cups in your right hand, if you will take the bread, break it, eat it together, feasting in your heart. Likewise, a cup in the right hand. Will you drink it? By receiving these sacraments, we say that we intend to lead a new life, walking henceforth in the holy ways of God. We're grateful. Not about us, but all about him. Minister White, if you will, I'm going to ask you to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. And as he does, let us all pray together. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for some, it has been a long time. I know this has been at least three months for us here at the church. Will you take the bread? Will you break it? And let's not sleep on this moment. It means something. Thank you, Jesus. Eat it together. Likewise, with that cup in your right hand, will you drink it all? It symbolizes the shed blood of Jesus. For without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. As you do it, see him washing you Amen. anew. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood that saved me. I know it was the blood. For one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it. I know it. I know it was the blood that saved me. I want you, I know we're still in the point where we're not touching yet and all those things, but I want you to point to somebody. I want you to, amen, look across the parking lot, look across the, amen, the way, and I want you to, amen, if you got a mouth, it, amen. Look at Pastor White, look at Joe. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. We're going to ask that you hold on to your cups. You, those who have a bag, just keep them in your bags and hold on to them. Hold on to them and we'll make sure we'll expedite those things. We're going to take care of some things, but our main piece right now, we got to make sure, and I, I'm, being, I'm being reminded, Mr. Because you got your offertory basket. Yes. <laughs> I thank you. Let me share this as your pastor. Let me thank you for your faithful and dedicated giving for sowing seeds in this ministry. God provided through the faithfulness of his people. I know it was the blood. 
And I know it, amen, was the blood that allowed us and gave us strength to continue to operate by faith. Again, I don't take it lightly. I'm going to bless those seats that are in your hands. And then we're going to have, amen, methodically at the end, after the benediction, after the blessing, we're going to have this section to come. Amen. And I don't know, if Deacon Bailey, if you could come over here with your basket. And we're going to have this section to come one at a time. And you bring it up, this section first, this section, and then this section. And we'll make sure that we get everybody before you leave here. But God is so good. If you can do so at this time, if you so desire. Amen. Let's take about two to three minutes. I'm going to bless this. Amen. And I think we should be out of here. But I know that those on the, uh, on the, on the camera are saying they're about ready to go. <laughs> but let me give them the benediction. Father, thank you. Thank you for our time together. And thank you for everything that we have been able to do. This is indeed historic. Lord, as we kick off, Lord God, the plan and to implement those things that are needful and necessary for us, Lord God, to once again look to resuming normality in worship. Father, thank you for the backup plan. Thank you as we looked at the failures of the fall that you addressed it in Jesus. He had to die. And because he died, we can live and have life eternal. Bless these thy people. Bless the seeds that they're sowing. Now may the grace of God, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide henceforth and evermore to all of God's people and those that are looking upon. Amen. Be a stream. We love you. We thank God. Let us all say together.